Happy Monday, rise and shine. This is our show, Good Morning Football. What's up, guys? My name's Kay Adams. This is Kyle Brandt, of course, and Nate Burleson, and Peter Schrager. Our show presented to you by Ram Trucks. We've got a great one. We've got depth at the quarterback position on America's team. What's going on, Nate? Big show. We have a great show, so don't you go anywhere. What we're going to do on this Star Wars theme, May the 4th, we're going to play a game of light side, dark side. The Bears decline Trubisky's fifth-year option. Will Trubisky's anger give him focus or make him stronger? Mm. We're going to answer that question here in a bit, and we'll focus on the NFC as we ask a round of burning questions. Was the Minneapolis Miracle part of the Saints' last dance? Get it? A little punt there. Or do they have something brewing for 2020? And then also, five simple words. What is Jerry Jones thinking? We'll answer that with a game of trend of the world. There's a lot to talk about, and we are here for you. So buckle up, sit down, relax, and enjoy the Let's show. <laughs> Peter Schrager, where did you get the Ferk, sir? Where did this you get the, the Ferk, sir? This is from Tennessee Titans. They had a special delivery for me here in quarantine. They said, you need Anthony Ferkser, the pride of Manalpin, New Jersey, the pride of Harvard. Anthony Ferkser is representing, and so is Devontae Parker. Okay, we're here on a Monday. We've got the last dance, but we got the first topic. Let's go. There's a list of about 150 things I'm jealous of you for. Mel Schrager is very high on that list, yeah. Peter Schrager. But the Ferkser jersey has got to be top five at GMFP, hashtag GMFP. Let's go lead block Cowboys. Leibach. Let's talk about it. it. Happened over the weekend. Let's start in Dallas. They signed Andy Dalton, who asked for his release from the Cincinnati Bengals after almost a decade as the starter there. It's a one-year deal. It's worth at least three million dollars, seven million with incentives. That's the middle range, I think, at the backup quarterback position. So, Shregs, break this down. Where does Dak stand? What do you think of the signing? And do they sign him to be a backup, or is this some sort of a bargaining chip if things go more south with Dak? It's really easy to take this and run and say this was a, a shot across the bow to, to Dak, who right now is on a franchise tag if he accepts it. And that would make about $31 million for the 2020 season. Right now, he has not accepted that yet. So he's kind of in limbo. And in the meantime, they hire Andy Dalton as his backup and everyone wants to make a big deal out of it. And maybe we can. We've got a show to make. And maybe we do go that way. I'm going to say this. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because it's a relatively small incentive financially. Andy Dalton is a Katy, Texas native, Dallas, Texas nearby. Drake, shout out, hello. Uh, I don't think this move is directed at Dak Prescott by any means, but you better believe the Cowboys are dotting every I this season, crossing every T, and they, they feel like they picked up enough this offseason, whether it be CeeDee Lamb, Devil Gallimore in the draft, or even Gerald McCoy in free agency, that if Dak were to go down, is Cooper Rush the guy who's going to suddenly take them to the Lombardi Trophy and win a Super Bowl? I think that was the question here. And even entertaining that thought made Andy Dalton a viable option. I'll say this. Troy Aikman won Super Bowls in 1992 and 1993. His backups were not Cooper Rush types. It was Steve Berline, Bernie Kosar, and Jason Garrett, guys who had been there and had been veterans and had done it before. I don't think Dak should be threatened. I certainly don't think this was a shot at Dak. I think this was the Cowboys making sure that they've got depth at every position in a season that they believe could be the one. This is not a shot, Peter. This is an insurance policy, and it's a great one. In this year, if Dak decides to become self-aware and do something crazy, like, I don't know, not report, hold out, boom, red rifle. Are you telling me this year, hmm. let's get this straight, this year of all the years with a very precarious quarterback situation, all of a sudden the Cowboys now want to get a very pedigreed playoff-tested backup after three years of Cooper Rush and a decade with Brandon Whedon and Kyle Orton? Peter, the guys you're talking about is 25 years ago. So someone might say, no, this is a Mike McCarthy thing. Thing. Wrong again. Mike McCarthy is Deshaun Kaiser, Brett Hundley, Scott Tolzien. This is a plan that says, you know what? We're not getting caboed again. You're not going to Zeke us. You want to go down there and you want to hold out and do the Zeke plan? We're ready to roll, baby. We will go with Dalton, who might be as good as you. In other words, if that come he August says, I'm going to Cabo, Jerry's saying, hasta luego, muchacho, porque tenemos el rifle rojo. Hasta luego, <laughs> me no payo. That's it. They're good to go. Red rifle. Uh, I got that. Thank you, Miss Rose. Spanish class. Kyle coming rifle. in hot this morning. I, 
I hear you on that, Kyle, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, Peter, you said it makes sense. It makes sense for Andy Dalton. It makes sense for the Cowboys. But just because it makes sense, that doesn't mean it makes dollars for Dak Prescott. And I get it. You know, we're all sitting here talking about him signing some $30 million deal that he can get annually, and maybe he can parlay that into a long-term deal. But when it comes to Dak Prescott being the quarterback that has provided success for them, that has put them in a position where they were division champs, playoff berths, all of a sudden we're looking at a quarterback that is looking behind him. I'll tell you from a player's perspective, everybody at home is sitting back saying, well, Nate, how does it feel when you're a starter and somebody comes in that has a pedigree? Like you said, KB, yes, this is a guy that went to a Pro Bowl a few times. So we know that Andy Dalton could play, and he's done it without talent next to him for majority of his career. But there's nothing scarier than having a guy behind you that can snatch your position. But if you're about that life, if you understand that you can go out there and mm -hmm. beat this dude out, then you have nothing to fear. But there is something to the fact that the Cowboys went out there and they paid Andy Dalton what they paid him, a decent contract, something that he can earn more. It really reminds me of Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. You think about last year how Tannehill came mm -hmm. into the Titans and all of a sudden he took over the position and then he made a big-time contract after that. So right now I know Dak Prescott is sitting back saying, I see what you're doing. He just has to stay the course and understand that he is more wanted than this last move makes him seem. The only way Tannehill got that job, though, is because Marcus Mariota wasn't playing up to speed. Dak Prescott is coming off a career year. He is the quarterback. I don't think it changes much. And if the fan base and media pundits and even Dak himself look at him as competition, that's a great thing. We all know what a premium it is to have a solid backup quarterback. And now the Dallas Cowboys, very much in a win year, win position window, have found a guy who's a great insurance policy, as Kyle said. I got to tell you, Nate, uh, your boy, Des Bryant, former Cowboys wide receiver, tweeted his reaction to the signing. You're talking about the player perspective. Well, here's Dez's. Nothing against Andy Dalton because I think he's a great player, but the Cowboys are extremely out of line. Pay Dak. I watched the Cowboys pay Tony twice, once without a winning record. I guess the Cowboys are viewing the quarterback position as a plug-in piece because of the dominant offense. Nate. What do you think about this? I will say there's a good chance Andy Dalton never touches the field. Dak is one of the most durable quarterbacks in the National Football League. That's why maybe they should pay him. He hasn't missed a start in his four seasons, 64 straight games. Yeah, that's right. He's went to the playoff a couple of times. He's had some epic battles with some of our favorite quarterbacks in the league. But Des Bryant is 100% right. There's something to the thought that you have an individual that if you just did a blind resume, I think majority of the teams in the NFL will say, yeah, I'll take Dak Prescott's resume over the first few years of his career because he's been successful, he's been durable, and on top of that, he doesn't waver. It's not like Dak Prescott has been in games and has been completely rattled. Has he played perfectly every game? No. But he definitely sits at the top of the charts when it comes to better quarterbacks, better young quarterbacks in this league. You know, I said this a long time ago when we were talking about Dak Prescott making money. Why does the buck have to stop with Dak Prescott? We've seen a lot of quarterbacks get hmm. paid. And this isn't me taking a shot. You guys know how I feel. I'm like Deion Sanders. Pay the man. Pay the man. I want everybody to make money. But even yeah. some of my former quarterbacks, you look at Matt Stafford, you look at the lack of success, playoff success with him, you look at Derek Carr. I mean, how about uh, uh, Matt Ryan, even though he made a Super Bowl? There's different individuals that you look at in different teams and say, well, he doesn't have the resume that Prescott has, but still he's sitting on a $100 million contract. I feel like Des Bryant is spot on. The buck doesn't need to stop with Dak Prescott. Pay him. Those guys you mentioned, Nate, they don't also have the teammates and the roster that Dak Prescott has. He is surrounded by excellent, well-paid players. And let's not get this twisted here. The Cowboys and Jerry would love to pay Dak Prescott. They want to pay him. They don't want to pay him $40 mm -hmm. million dollars a year or whatever the hell crazy number he's asking for. Let's not forget this either. Tony Romo. His contract, even the big one, the second one that Des is referring to, guys, it was for about $18 million a year. It was a huge number that he yep. didn't even see play out. It was a reasonable number. So they want to pay Dak. They want to have him be quarterback forever, but they can't pay him like Aaron Rodgers because they got players all over the field who are already getting played. Let's never forget in this, as we sort of sympathize for Dak in the business sense, he wants so much money, and God bless him. I just don't know if they can afford what he wants. I love, love that Des starts his tweet with nothing against Andy Dalton. Hey, no comment has ever been good after nothing against, uh, you know, this. Nothing against right. the band uh, uh, Menudo, but uh, here's what I would say with this one. It's How like plug in, please. <laughs> plug in, please. Plug in, please. 
It's the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. It is the maybe single greatest position of responsibility in professional sports. Like to say it's a plug in piece, I think is really short sighted. What comes with being the quarterback of the Cowboys is great wealth, is great fame, and also in our Star Wars theme, great respect.